have a couple of cliches. Oil and water don't mix. Things roll like water off a duck's back. Well, they're cliches because they're true, or largely so. But when you force oil water to mix, and they are sometimes forced to do that, then the ducks and other seabirds are in trouble. Anything, in fact, which has to live by swimming around on top of the water. And here's why. You see, if you take a duck's feather, or any seabird's feather, you'll find that it's kept in pretty good nick by the bird itself. All those bits and pieces along the side are sort of zippered together with a bill. And if you try and push that underwater, you see this. First of all, under the water it goes silvery, and above the water, it's dry. Push it under, it's silvery. Above the water, it stays dry. That silvery layer is air. It sticks to the feather because the feather is, in fact, slightly oily. Water doesn't mix with it, and so that keeps the feather dry. That means the bird can float around, staying waterproof, dry, very floaty sort of animal, and it's not in trouble. But sometimes oil gets onto the water. Tank is discharged at sea, or there's an oil spill, a wreck or something, or an oil well may burst. And when the oil and the water get together, of course they don't mix, and the oil floats up to the top. And that's very bad for the birds, because that's where they want to be too. And you can see that if you go dunking a bird into that, the water may not stick to the feather, but all that oil will. It sticks to the oily film on the feather, and the feather comes out looking like that. And the bird is in disastrous shape. It can't swim properly, and it can't fly properly, and it can't keep its feathers clean. OK, so the oil and the water don't mix until you start mucking around with them. And one of the ways that they used to clean up oil spills, and to some extent still do, is to force them to mix. Let's just put the oil and the water together into this bottle. There we are, one floating on top of the other in little droplets. If I leave it, you can see the oil floating to the top. If I do what the waves do and shake the whole lot up, they still won't mix. All that oil comes up to the top again. But if I add detergent there, the sort of stuff that you add to your washing up liquid to make the water mix with the oil on the plates, you get this effect. In goes the oil and the water and the detergent. And then if you shake it, you get a very different result. A few bubbles, but mainly a milky liquid down the bottom, which is oil, water and detergent all mixed up into a sort of ghastly soup. Ghastly for the seabird, because if you put that into there, and then go dunking a feather into it, which represents the bird, you find that the water does wet the feather because the detergent gets the oils in the feather, the oil sticks to the oils in the feather too, and the bird is wet, and it's oily, and it's waterlogged, and it's in very bad shape indeed. It can't swim, it can't fly, it can't even float. So that's where those old cliches break down. It's the reason that we now use dispersants rather than detergents to break up oil spills, but it's also the reason why whatever we do for those oil spills, they still remain an extraordinary danger to any kind of water bird. Mm -hmm.